The ocean is an incredible place. Let's keep it that way. Join us as we hunt for sustainable seafood. Your seafood choices matter for the future of ocean health. Hey, I'm Sarah Curry from Soraya Films. In this episode, I'm sitting down with Miami spear fisherwoman, Lauren, and then we head to a fish market and restaurant in Coconut Grove that works to source local seafood when possible. When I'm at work, it's all I think about. I dream about free diving. <laughs> I dream about spear fishing. It's just ecstasy. It's just another world. And it's a great one. I'm Lauren Sarasua. And yeah, I grew up on Key Biscayne in Miami. I've seen a significant change since I was little. I've always loved the water, but I never, I never knew the possibilities. It just seems like there's so much bycatch that's happening. If I care so much about the ocean, I need to stop supporting stuff that does damage to it. It makes sense that if people are throwing out these huge nets into the ocean, that you're gonna get stuff that you're not planning on getting. Like you're gonna get fish species that you weren't supposed to get. You're gonna get dolphins, turtles, squid. You can't choose what goes into the net. Spearfishing was also a way for me to get away from that. Since it's so selective, there's zero bycatch. Once you start catching your own fish and getting that feeling of accomplishment that you know, you're feeding yourself, you become addicted. I'm addicted. <laughs> I knew that if I started with a pole spear, that it would force me to really become a great huntress because you have to get so much closer to fish and that really forces you to understand fish behavior, learn how to behave yourself around fish so that they'll come in closer and so that you can get dinner. If the water's swaying and the fish are swaying, I'll do the same thing. Another thing you can do is grunt. <laughs> they call it a grouper grunt. <laughs> and uh, that also attracts fish. But I just try to be super calm. People think that spearfishers are just down there to shoot anything that passes, but it, it's really not that way. You're super selective. If you're blue water hunting, if you're hunting on a reef or a wreck, it's very different. Open water, you can shoot a fish and it'll take off, but if you're in a, in a reef or on a wreck, you have to think about the fact that that fish can go somewhere else. It's not just in the abyss. You have to think like, how far is that wreck? How deep can that fish go in there if I don't fight it enough so that it, to keep it out? Especially if you're attached to it by a reel. So there's just a lot of factors that you have to think about in different situations. Going down and, and being able to see all the different fish and having in your memory the flavor. Do you like the fish? Do you like how it tastes? Because if not, you're not going to shoot it. Then you have to know the size limit. You need to know if it's in season. There's a lot of things that you have to consider before shooting that fish. Because you don't want to shoot anything that's out of season or that you're not supposed to shoot. And the regulations change all the time. I'm, I'm one of those people that are like, thank you, fish, I appreciate your life. <laughs> like, but uh, it, it wasn't difficult. I thought it would be harder. I really thought it would be much harder because I've always been an animal lover and I've just recently started to appreciate the hunting lifestyle and the meaning behind it. Before I just thought it was like horrible and I didn't know enough about it. You have to open your eyes to where your food comes from and where it's being sourced and you have to 
understand that if you want to eat it, it's dying somehow. These animals aren't dying of old age. You have to realize that it's getting killed. And you have to think about if you could do that. And spearfishers get a lot of, a lot of slack for that. People don't realize how difficult spearfishing is. It's, it takes a lot of effort to get that fish. Not only the gas money, the time, the training, the equipment, like, it, it's not easy. It's a lot of fun, <laughs> but it's not easy. I mean, nobody likes to see aggressive sharks, but they're there. And it's just something that you know you have to deal with as a spearfisher. But the worst thing I've seen is just trash. If you're free diving and you see a net, like try to take it out. I'm definitely pickier about the fish that I eat. But definitely if, if I see that, uh, that a restaurant gets their fish locally, then I, I would su su totally support that. And that would be like my main place. Finding a seafood market that sources local fish and also serves food is harder than it would seem in Miami. One cool spot is a small place in Coconut Grove called Shortador. They've been around since late 2016. The owner, Indira, is one of my favorite fishmongers. calls local fishermen from Key West to Boynton Beach to see what they've caught and see what she can offer for the week. The market has a vibe of a neighborhood backyard party. Sometimes she hosts local vendors. And if you're lucky, you can catch a local musician. She's all right, she's all right, she's all right, she's all right. What kind of fish is this? That is mangrove snapper. Oh, I love mangrove snapper. I love frying mangrove snapper whole. It's so good. You've done that it before? Oh, yeah. My partner has. He's the, the chef the of chef. the house. I shot one, and my spearfishing buddy told me that they're amazing fried whole. So you just have to scale it, and then gut it, and just fry it whole. I mean, it's amazing. How often do you get mangrove snappers? Yeah. It depends where you are. They like to hang out in reefs. So if you're reef hunting, then you can you can usually get one. And they're pretty skittish fish. They're not that easy to shoot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like compared to hogfish and red grouper, they're definitely more skittish. They're pretty abundant. Yeah. Right? Like you see them a lot. Yeah. Okay? A lot. It's so much fun to be able to catch your own fish and, and then share it with your friends and family and you make a dinner out of it and it, it's just yeah, I it's mean, like it seems like a huge part of spear fishing is just yeah. the camaraderie of like Yeah hey, and the I sharing. Mangrove snappers or gray snappers are one of thirteen snapper species found in Florida. Worldwide, there are over a hundred and five different species. But snapper is commonly mislabeled which is why it's important to find a fishmonger you can have an honest conversation with. It's a nice business for sure. For me, it's, it's nice to like bring people together and you know, fresh, sustainable fish. Yeah, and I was telling Sarah that it's just, it's so nice to be able to have an establishment like this yeah. where Thank you. it's not only the, the food is delicious, yeah. but it, right. you can feel good about it. Yeah, right. And I want you to feel at home. Yeah. So that's yeah, part of the vibe too. I want to yeah. Bring your dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a flaky, delicious fish, isn't it? Yeah. And it's hard to find places that know how to cook it properly. <laughs> totally. Yeah, this is amazing.
especially with all the tourist traps and they don't they don't have good food at all. It's weird to me that like some people are really afraid of eating a whole fish because mainly how we see fish is just the grocery store and kind of the fillet already. Yeah, no one wants to see the fins and yeah. But, um, <laughs> I haven't gotten any bones yet. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Fingers crossed. It, it's a pretty clean fish. You can see them clearly and you shouldn't have any issues with bones. I'm super excited that there are places like this opening up that that realize that there's a community of people that share the same passion and that they really need an option that's yeah. more sustainable because it, it, it not only tastes delicious, but it's, it's something that you can feel good about. Definitely. You know? Get to know your fishmonger and ask them questions. And support local artisans when you can. If you're a fisher, download the Fish Rules app to stay up to date on Florida fishing regulations. Want to learn how to freedive? Visit SoreyaFilms.org to find local instructors. Thanks for joining us as we continue our hunt for sustainable seafood. Here's what we'll be talking about in the next episode. Shellfish production in general, of which clam is a part, is in a lot of ways a perfect protein source. We have a naturally filter feeding animal that's low in the food chain that's way down on that trophic pyramid um, and it's on top of all that on top of all the great environmental things about it it's delicious you can cook it a gazillion different ways um, it's super healthy